Donald Trump arrived in Mexico and took a helicopter to the presidential palace. That to avoid Mexico City traffic and scattered street protests. After his meeting with Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto, a harsh critic of Trump's, the GOP nominee said this about his push for a wall on the border between the two countries. We recognize and respect the right of either country to build a physical barrier or wall on any of its borders. On his promise that Mexico would pay for the wall, Trump punted. We did discuss the wall. We didn't discuss payment of the wall. Uh, that'll be for a later date. This was a very preliminary meeting. Trump identified five goals for U.S.-Mexico relations, not included. Deportation of the estimated 11 million undocumented immigrants, many from Mexico, living in the U.S. A more restrained and diplomatic Trump described illegal border crossings and drug trade as a bilateral concern. I mean, it's not a one-way street. And we will work together and we will get those problems solved. Sobre el futuro compartido de nuestros países. President Peña Nieto took pains to remind Trump that in terms of net migration, more Mexicans are returning home than coming to the U.S. And he urged respect from Trump, a veiled reference to his derogatory comments about Mexico. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. Trump tried to take the edge off his own harsh rhetoric. Mr. President, I want to thank you. This has been a tremendous honor, and I call you a friend. There is now confusion, a good deal of confusion, about exactly what was discussed in terms of financing a Trump-proposed wall on the U.S.-Mexico border. Elaine, on Twitter just moments ago, Peña Nieto said explicitly that he told Trump at the beginning of their meeting, Mexico will not pay. Later here tonight in Phoenix, Trump will try to clarify possibly this and other immigration issues with a speech his campaign describes as one significant and focused on the nuts and bolts of immigration policy. This notion of who would pay for the wall, um, what did you make of that? Well, if in fact the president of Mexico, as he just said on Twitter, told Trump directly, we're not paying for it, what Trump is maybe trying to say is, I didn't bring it up. I didn't force the issue. I didn't discuss it. And he still considers that a live topic. For lots of political reasons in Mexico, Peña Nieto needs to try to knock that down or any impression that that's still on the table because he is unpopular in Mexico and Mexicans will not appreciate any sense of movement from him about Mexico doing anything, directly or indirectly, to finance a wall on the U.S.-Mexico border. So this story is far from over, but Trump likes to describe himself as a negotiator who hears what he wants to hear, drives the bargain the way he wants to until a resolution is reached. He's not in a position to reach any resolution, of course, because he's not president yet and may never be. We'll see. Uh, Major, the campaign has been tight-lipped about what we're going to be hearing later tonight. Did you hear things in Trump's remarks this afternoon that could signal some hints? Well, certainly. And the, the Trump campaign has not laid out everything that's going to be in the speech, but it has given plenty of soft indications. One, there'll be an effort to prioritize immigration policy. First, secure the border. Stop the flow of people and drugs and then work on internal securing of documents for those who seek employment. Then deal with the issue of deportations. And also, not far behind, relentlessly criticize Hillary Clinton's approach to immigration entirely. Those will all be components of tonight's speech. And what we're also led to believe is there will be some specifics from Trump about how to finance the wall that he's proposing on the U.S.-Mexico border alternatives, things that may involve Mexico that may not, but that are nevertheless indicative of how he imagines this could all be financed and built in relatively short order. Remember, Trump's rhetoric on this is absolutely unequivocal. He says it's going to be built, built rapidly, be impenetrable, and that Mexico is going to pay for it. Those are all things that Trump cannot walk away from without significant political risk. How he tries to characterize all those things with some underlying policy specifics will be one interesting component of tonight's speech. Uh, Major, as you know, Trump was careful to outline his own proposals in terms of quote-unquote shared goals with Mexico. What did you make of that specific notion? That once you sit down with the leader of another country and you're not the leader of your country, you have to give and take. Now, Trump likes to say he's very good at that process, but he also, 
and I've seen this so many times at his rallies, Elaine, portrays himself as the singular American negotiator, capable of driving the hardest bargain imaginable. And on this very first foray on the diplomatic stage, you saw Trump in many ways temporizing his language, not just on shared responsibilities, talking about how illegal immigration is a problem for Mexico as well in terms of migrants coming from Central America or South America, describing it not as a problem America has with Mexico, but one that America and Mexico share. That's completely different language. And on the subject of the North American Free Trade Agreement, Trump has said on the stump over and over, it has to be scrapped entirely. Today he said it needs to be improved and there needs to be wealth and strong manufacturing jobs throughout the hemisphere. Well, let us be quite blunt about it, the hemisphere includes a lot more than America and American jobs and American wealth. So you began to see Trump expanding the definitions of what his goals might be for renegotiation of the North American Free Trade Agreement. All of this is what you would put into the more traditional category of stagecraft and diplomatic statecraft. But that's not what Trump has promised his supporters. He's promised them a relentlessly pro-American, America first, hard bargainer. It'll be interesting to see how his supporters view what Trump said and how he looked today on the world stage in relationship to those very many quite, and quite conspicuous and memorable promises. All right, Major Garrett, thanks so much.